you feel like the church doesn't love you you feel like no one cares about you and that yeah. you've got no place in the church yes. and yet you are deliberately choosing not to participate yes. and the moment you participate you realize oh, this person is so friendly this person is you know this person can help me in this way or oh, i can help this person in this way but when you're withdrawn you don't have that opportunity because you know people are also um those who are participating they tend to be close to each other know each other they've got that relationship yes. because of participating yes. and i think this brings me to my second point which is you know it allows you to build some genuine friendships i think we've, we've spoken in a previous podcast about cultivating um authentic friendships yes. welcome to imago day a podcast by women for women where we discuss what it means to be an image bearer. We seek to apply biblical wisdom to everyday life situations for our growth and glorification of God. Welcome yet to another podcast. We're looking at engaging in church activities and the importance of the means of grace. Mm. I'm with Chimamwe. Welcome, Chimamwe. Thank you. Thank you. Um, excited to look into this new topic i think there will be a lot to learn not only for me and you but even for for the listeners yes indeed um i think we most of the time we overlook the importance of engaging in church activities mm, mm. we tend to think that church is only sunday mm, mm. so it would be good for us to just um I don't know whether to use the word brainstorm or share. Yeah, just discuss around church activities yeah. and the importance of means of grace, so that we can together um, be built and mm-hmm. uh, we can, if we do not engage in most of the church activities, start engaging in the most in, in, in church yeah. activities. And at least some of them, yeah. Yes, yes, at least some of them. Yeah. So as usual, I always want to understand what does the word engage mean? Engage. Mm-hmm. Um, I think from my understanding, it's to take part in something, you know, to be involved in something. Um, in this case, obviously, it's to take part or be involved in church activities. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So there's nothing like if I'm going to engage myself, it means that I have to give in mm. the homey. I mm. have to be mm. part mm-hmm. to belong to, mm-hmm. to something. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is that is good. So if we are taught engaging in church activities. What are some of the church activities do we know? That's I think, um, just speaking from personally, from our church, um, I know we have prayer meetings. I know there are Bible studies. Mm-hmm. I know there are various seminars, which usually take place on weekends. I know there's um, family conferences. Um, and sometimes there are different activities as well, which just take place on, on Saturdays as well. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, having those uh, things that you've mentioned, I'm so sure it's, it's for a purpose when we have uh, prayer meetings, mm, Bible mm. studies, seminars, mm. and, and, and things like that. Uh, when the church eldership sits and say we're going to have these as part of our church activities, I guess, for a reason. Yeah, definitely. definitely. And, and what's the reason? Why should we have all such... I think with each activity, there's something which um, we can personally benefit from. Um, and not only that, but we're equally called to attend to certain, um, to certain activities as well. Mm. So maybe I'll start with, for example, with the prayer meetings, mm. right? Um, prayer is our means of communicating with God, yeah. right? One of the many ways in which we can communicate with God. And when we come together as believers, you know, sometimes you find that you're going through something and you don't have the energy or you're too weak to pray to God about it. But when I'm sitting with you, Auntie Miriam, and I say, Auntie Miriam, I'm going through this. You're able to sit, you're able to pray for me regarding that situation. It might be something to do with my family, friends, work, um, relationship, whatever it is, you know, we can come together, we share the word, and we're able to sit together and pray together. That is beneficial for not only our personal relationships with God, but even just to take whatever issues that we have to God as well. Um, in a in a situation like I said, where you're not, you know, you run out of words. Sometimes you do run out of words, like exactly. you know, I'm tired. But your friend is able to carry that weight for you. 
um and i'll just speak to the seminars before you can maybe speak to the other activities as well i know a number of seminars are and uh, church meetings are in relation to a certain topic which you know is there to edify us is there to sanctify us is there to uh, build us and you know in certain situations sometimes you might read your bible and you may not be able to pick out like oh wow this verse actually speaks to this particular situation i'm in yeah. but because i did not i was not able to contextualize it in this certain way in which maybe the pastor has and in which the elder has in which in which one of the elders has um i i'm not able to pick it up but in such a situation you know someone comes to you and speaks to you about business and it's not only you're not just only being taught about oh the bible says this this these are practical situations whatever is in the bible you're able to relate it to our practical situations yeah. so there are different areas which um all these meetings touch which can help us in our personal lives in our work lives in our friendships in our relationships mm -hmm. our marriages our homes and all those things yeah so to help us look at the world in a different exactly way. exactly because when we go out there actually we have so many things that uh, come our way mm, mm. so when when you engage yourself in church activities when you engage yourself in bible studies mm. in just uh fellowship mm. which is church socials and things like that mm. you get to see the world in a different mm. lens mm. like for a person like me who wears glasses if i take <laughs> off my, my my glasses i won't be able to to see properly but you tend to see things in a different light yeah that is true and also it's just an encouragement mm. i want us to to read hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 you see how the scriptures encourage us to take part in church activities why we should be part of the church not just um, a sunday church goer that mm. you just go on sunday and on Sunday you go exactly at 10 hours and after church service. Yes, it yeah. is a church activity, mm -hmm. but it is one that you just go sit there, listen to the word preached, and then leave. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So if you found it, please read for us Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. All right. So the Bible reads, And let us consider how we may spare one another and one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching encouraging one another or the more as you see like you said we go through so many things mm. if i have a problem and i'm just alone it would be so burdensome mm, mm. so when we attend these church activities we are being encouraged mm. that's what um the the bible tells us in hebrew we actually able to spare one another you see me burdened you mm. see me heartbroken or you see me worried you'll mm. be able to say you know this is not the way you usually mm. uh, are so what is going on and then when i tell you you are able to pray for me you are able to encourage me using the word of god we are able to to tell me i've been there mm. if you've been there yeah or i know somebody who's been there in your situation so do not lose heart so meaning that us taking part in these church activities is not just me being a church member, mm. but me being more like an, a person who spars mm -hmm. a, f a friend. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll give an example. When you look at, um, when you plant a tree, mm -hmm. you don't water it. Mm. You don't nourish it. You mm -hmm. don't uh, prune it if it is a fruit tree. Meaning that even as it is growing, that fruit tree that you have planted, it won't produce what it needs to produce. Exactly. And nobody will be able to enjoy the fruit that is there. It's mm. either it will be a, bad, a, a tree that doesn't grow fruit, mm. or it will be a tree that everybody will be looking at and thinking that thing needs to come out from mm. there. It doesn't look nice. So the importance of, of means of grace is uh, the importance of us engaging in church activities. We are able to spar one another to build one another mm -hmm. yeah so that no one lacks behind no yeah. one is feeling lonely mm -hmm. i like that song uh, brother let me be your servant mm. let me be as christ to you mm. uh, our christian walk is a walk of servanthood mm. if i don't engage myself in church activities i won't be your servant mm. i won't be able to help you mm. it means that i'll be a standalone christian mm. And I want build because we look at 
our Christian walk, we look at the church as a body of Christ. Mm. It is a body of Christ with each member having different responsibilities. Mm. You can be the hand, you can be the foot, you can be the... Whatever you are in the church, you are having a purpose. Yeah. So if you don't take part, if we don't take part, we won't be able to to grow. Mm. That help will come to the growth, talking about importance of changing, uh, attending the activities, it actually branches to growth. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't grow, it means that whatever I'm supposed to do suffers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's also important to understand um, the aspect of engaging or participating in that it does not limit you to just being present. No. Engaging and participating means that even if you're going for a seminar or whatever it may be, you are actually taking part. If it's a prayer meeting, you're equally praying with the fellow believers. Yes. If it's um, a seminar, for example, you're not just sitting, you're taking down notes, mm -hmm. you're asking questions, and you're engaging with fellow believers to maybe exchange ideas. Or oh, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? So that it's it's genuine participation. Yes. yes. I think only when you understand what it can do for you, mm -hmm. are you able to fully participate and actually attend those meetings with a genuine heart and be able to benefit from them yeah. yeah so if it's a bible study meaning that you're also taking part exactly in that taking part meaning that you spend time alone mm. in actually reading the bible mm. when for example in our house group we're actually going through the baptist confession and the time that people are sharing you're also able to share mm. what mm. you 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 are going through mm. or what you have read or what you understand in in li like that everybody else is able to grow it's like we're feeding from mm. each other mm. it's not one person just giving giving mm. giving mm. and you you're there seated and just yeah. benefiting 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 and not, yes <laughs> exactly <laughs> so nobody is drained we are actually building one yeah. another up yeah. yes, sharpening each other yes mm. as the book of proverbs says mm -hmm. mm. yes it is true and that is Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 17. So Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 17 reads, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Exactly, as iron sharpens iron. So meaning that you are iron, I am iron, mm. we're sharpening one another. Mm. So like that we both we are both sharpened, mm. not that the, the I should be the only one who is just, Trying. All the time, you're sharpening your friend. In the meantime, you're becoming blunt. Yes, yes. You actually become blunt. You actually get tired. Of, mm. But like this, it's not getting sharpened. Mm, mm. So that is the importance for us to uh, attend these these uh, church activities, mm. to uh, participate in the church activities, so that we can be able to sharpen one another. Mm. And we say that participating in church activities and the importance of the means of grace. Mm. So when you look at the word grace, it is a word that we are told that when you ask Uncle Google, it will tell you that <laughs> it is unmerited divine assistance. Mm. Some You give help. Mm. But in this, we're trying to see who gives us help. Mm. So I want us to read Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 to see where the help, what, what grace is. As if the book of Ephesians puts it. You said Ephesians chapter 2? Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. The Bible reads, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. By grace that we've been saved. A gift from God. Mm -hmm. No one can say. I can't sit here to say, you know what, Chimome? Because me, I do this and that and that. And uh, is what saved me. No, mm. grace is God's gift. Mm. It's God saving us. Like Google's telling us, divine assistance. Mm. He saved us. Nothing came from us. So mm. if I was saved by grace, meaning that the importance for me to attend the means of grace is so that each day that I learn from the Bible study, mm. the prayer meeting, mm. Every activity that I attend, it helps me to grow mm. and know more about God mm. and see how I can be part to help one another in church, mm. to help my fellow believer. 
mm. so that I can also benefit from you as much as you benefit from me. Yeah. That's very true. I just have a, a question and I'd like to hear what your opinion is. What, what advice would you have for someone who, let's say, for example, um, has difficulty in praying in, in front of other people? Because I know on Thursdays we have prayer meetings. For those people who feel, ah, no, ah, I just want to pray alone in my room. What advice would you have to encourage them to join in, in prayer meetings on Thursdays? I think um, it also encourages other people to pray mm. with, with, when they hear you pray. Mm. Not only that, it also, you know, when, when we are praying, yes, we should pray as individuals mm. in our closets. We mm. should have our quiet times mm. when we spend time with God. But also, we should also not neglect to meet with other believers mm. in our Bible, in our prayer meeting. When we attend the prayer meeting, it encourages others mm. that uh, you also take part in the prayer meeting, mm. that you're also praying. Because each time you keep quiet, you go to a prayer meeting, you wait for Chimamwe to pray, and you're always quiet there. You don't even say, Amen. You don't agree with <laughs> You don't agree with Chimwemwe who is praying. Mm. You are just quiet. It also somehow, I think, discourages others mm. to say, ah, but that one always attends, but they're always quiet. And I think for you to pray in a prayer meeting, mm. it, you're not talking to the people that are there. Mm, you, mm. you are actually addressing God. Exactly. You are actually telling the people who are there who are agreeing with you mm. that uh, whatever we are praying for, because mm. these are needs for your friends mm. that are on the table. We are praying for our country. Mm. We are praying for, belie for believers who are not well. Mm. We are praying for job opportunities for, for people who don't have jobs. Mm. So when we pray for them, we are talking to God and we agree that Amen. What our brother has prayed for mm. is right. So when mm. you go to a prayer meeting, you are quiet. It's discouraging. It's mm. like you're not ready to speak to God. Mm. So what's the purpose of attending the prayer meeting? Mm. Are you there to, to attend to be quiet? Or... <laughs> yeah. Mm. You can say I'm praying in my heart, but it is um, a church prayer meeting. Mm. So we are asking you. Yes. Uh, take part. Yes. I know there are times that we won't be able to take part, mm. but you should not be quiet forever. Okay. There should be a time that you also take mm. part exactly. and encourage one another. That's true. Mm -hmm. I think um, even as you're speaking, it just it just dawned on me as well that, you know, the whole idea of engaging and participating in church activities goes beyond attending in the sense that um, for example, if there's a seminar on a Saturday afternoon, especially us as ladies, I know with with men, they are less inclined to do this, but, you know, um, with, um, like I said, church activities on a Saturday, where you can just take a small snack, a drink, and I, I think usually what we, what we, um, we tend to think or feel is, no, there's always going to be that one auntie or that one sister or that one friend who always bring food or who always bring something for us to enjoy, and we're waiting on them, you know, but I think it's only fair that, you know, when you understand that you're not coming to this place just to benefit for yourself, you're not doing this because um, you've been forced to. It should be a joy mm -hmm. for you to say, okay, no, I'm going to meet with my fellow believers. Let me take, even if it's bananas, let me take bananas. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to take the most expensive, oh, I'm going to carry this lovely big cake with lovely cream. No, it, it can just be something which is small biscuits, mm -hmm. you know, where people are able to share and even as they're... Um, coming to meet, they're able to even enjoy with uh, enjoy the fellowship with these little snacks and, and, and things like that. So, you know, it, it's little things like making sure, let's say, you come in early, the chairs are maybe not straight, straightening the chairs, yes. um, ensuring that, okay, maybe they're, um, you know that we need um, hymn books. You know where they're placed and they haven't been put out yet. Yeah. You know, just removing them and putting them out so when people come in, they're able to pick up their hymn books. It's little things like that which still contribute to um, to participating in, in, in church activities. I remember um, being in, in university. It wasn't a church, but we used to meet for Bible studies in the evenings, right? And um, 
I remember one one of the students, I can't remember who it was, who was explaining how, you know, there are blessings which come in doing these little things. And and for us, because we used to sit in the classroom, it meant that we had to move desks around so that we can now just leave chairs for people to sit on so that they can face the, the person in front without the desk in front. And then afterwards, it means resetting. But you'd find there are over 15, maybe 20, maybe 30 people sitting. So it's a number of chairs which you have to move around and make sure that, you know, you put in place and reset afterwards and the person was saying you know there are blessings which come in doing such things mm -hmm. you may look at it as cumbersome ah I me mean, let me go and study let me go and uh, rest i've had my bible study let me go and rest but you don't know because god sees these things you know and you're not doing it for yourself you're doing it for god and for god's people mm -hmm. and you know it's, it's it's little things like that which i just wanted to emphasize that you know blessings do come with um these little things and you don't do it so that people can see no it's not for other people you're doing it for, for you and for God, you know, you're doing this because you're trying to help in serving God. Mm -hmm. You're trying to ensure that, you know, um, God's word is ministered in the best way. People are not distracted by anything, looking for books, looking for an old power, whatever it is, mm. you know, which, which you can assist in availing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is true. Because most of the times we tend to think, unless it's something that is grand, mm. you know, like, mm. wow, mm. this is what you've done, or... For us to uh, to fully participate, to take part, is because I want people to notice. Mm, you know, mm. We when we part in these church activities, we are not doing it for the people. Mm, mm, yes, mm. as much as it will also help them, it will edify them, it will bring them closer to God. First and foremost, me taking part in these church activities for the glory. Of God. Exactly, exactly, that and God. that's very important to remember. And not as unto Chimwemwe, mm. because if Chimwemwe is not there the next time, I won't do you it. You won't do it exactly because I'm thinking, ah, I only sing if Chimwemwe is there mm. so that Chimwemwe can appreciate my singing. Mm. But it's not that mm. when I go for ladies' meeting, mm. I'm going for the ladies' meeting to learn, mm. to grow, mm. to sharpen, yes, my fellow believer, but. As to the glory of God. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, mm. it is my relationship with God. Exactly. These activities are put in place to mm. draw us closer to mm. God. Yes, it will draw us closer to our fellow believers, mm. but also it will draw, draw us closer mm. to God. Mm. And um, if what we should understand that Christianity is servanthood. Mm. I'll give an example of the time that Christ was washing the feet of the disciples. Mm. Peter said, don't wash my feet. Mm. They are too dead. You, I can't allow you to do that. But Jesus went and washed the dirt, dirtiest feet. And you know, they used to wear sandals. Mm. It's not like uh, shoes these days, you take off your shoe. They were dirty. He washed them. Mm. He showed us how we are supposed to do. We are supposed to wash each other's feet. So if I'm not taking part, if I'm not among believers how do i wash their feet mm, mm. i know washing their our feet is not literally getting your feet to me washing mm. i can wash my i can wash your feet by i see probably you're in need of something and i have it mm. you're in need of this yeah we go mm. you come to me you say oh i come to you and say you know what i was looking for this but i can't find because mm. i don't have money to you'll be there to help me mm. you're washing my feet mm. so Christianity is servanthood. And mm. how do we learn to be a servant? How do I learn to to be engaged with you, to participate, to edify you, mm. is by taking part in the activities mm. Of, mm. Of, of the church. Yeah. Also, It also helps me grow mm. in the gift that God... You know, a gift is something when it's shared. It's very rare that... When somebody has gotten a gift, they'll get it and pack it and say, mm. this gift or not. <laughs> gifts are usually things that are grand. That mm. Everybody will know that. Hey, you that saw, was the gift. That mm. was the gift that she was given either on her birthday. That was a gift that she got on Christmas. That was a gift that she was bought for when she passed. I remember when I passed my grade, my grade nine, my mom bought me a watch. Wow. <laughs> I didn't even want to take it for something that I wanted, wanted everyone to, to see. see that this is the watch that my mom got me. So it is a gift. So mm. you're given a gift, pass it on. Mm. Mm. God gave it freely. There's nothing we're told in Ephesians that you've got, mm. that you brought. 
yeah, to give it yeah, to you. Yeah. yeah, so that is, that is, we should bear that in mm, mind. Mm. That if I don't take part, I will be withdrawn. Mm. If I'm withdrawn, I will wither away. Mm. I won't know how to engage myself, mm. how to uh, help, mm. how to grow myself. Mm. Even nobody will see that I'm struggling mm. because there's nobody to come. I'm not, I'm not taking part. I'm just mm. me, myself mm. and that. Mm. No. And when you read the scriptures, actually it keeps on telling us that we should be with other believers. Mm. If Christianity was for individuals, it was just going to be me, I'm a Christian. Mm. I will live my life here and uh, that's all. It's, I'll give an example of a family. You take part in a family's activity because you are part of a family. Mm. You cannot say, ah, uh, we're having supper. Uh, I'm not going to take part in eating supper mm. with those guys. I will eat on my own. Mm. At times, you even miss our sisters because like, I just need to. Let's have a meal. Mm. Because you want to build that bond. Mm. We actually build the bond stronger when we are taking part when mm. we are engaged in church yeah. activities. I think, I think you've raised um, a number of very good points, but something which really stood out for me is the fact that, you know, um, when you are not engaging in church activities, you tend to be withdrawn. And um, it brought two important things into my mind. The first one being that, um, you know, sometimes when you it's easy i've been in that place before where i've decided to just sit back and be like okay i'm not going to engage in anything and you feel like the church doesn't love you you feel like no one cares about you and that yeah. you've got no place in the church yes. and yet you are deliberately choosing not to participate yes. and the moment you participate you realize oh, this person is so friendly this person is you know this person can help me in this way oh i can help this person in this way but when you're withdrawn you don't have that opportunity because you know People are also, um, those who are participating, they tend to be close to each other, know each other. They've got that relationship yes. because of participating. Yes. And I think this brings me to my second point, which is, you know, it allows you to build some genuine friendships. I think we've, we've spoken in a previous podcast about cultivating um, authentic friendships. Yes. And this is one of the opportunities because I remember even then we're talking about how you need to kind of participate and um engage with fellow believers so that you get an opportunity to build actual friendships with them mm -hmm. and um it means that even when you're facing troubled times you're having a tough time you know that you can go to a believer you know yes. you can go to someone who you can speak to and they can you know advise you based on the word but if auntie miriam for example i do not have a relationship with you i know in in the past few months there are times i've come to you and i've just sought your advice on certain things mm. and it's because we found ourselves engaging in the church activity such as this the podcast yes. but had i not um elected to participate in this i wouldn't have been able to get that wise advice from you you know and it's, it's similar with other people as well that right? you know the only way you can build certain friendships certain relationships is by engaging in 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 church activities and it may not even be um friendships which will assist let's say in your personal life it could be in your work life it could be in your school life it could be in all these other things you may never know who the next person to assist you with maybe even a job or whatever it is who's actually in the church but because you choose to be withdrawn you choose to um be a bench warmer as they like to call them and not participate or engage mm -hmm. you miss out on these great opportunities which god has literally put on a silver platter for you yeah yeah and and just to say you know a Christian work can be lonely if you mm. do not take part in the church. Mm. Mm. If you to stay away, you actually become very lonely. You may think that there is nobody who cares for you, mm. nobody who loves you, because whenever you go through things, for example, you have a funeral, you have mm. a relative mm. that has passed away. When you just, the moment you, oh, I have a funeral, you put it on, on the group, mm. or you tell someone, that someone will tell someone in church, and they'll be praying for you. Mm. But when you have a funeral, you're always there alone, you're always doing this, and then you start thinking, ah, no, me, at church there's nobody that mm. cares, cares for me. exactly. Mm. But when you really take part, mm. you will find that the road that you're taking mm. It's not lonely mm, mm. because we are told it's not a, an easy road mm. to be traveling. Mm. This road is very bumpy. Mm. 
uh, there's a book that I read to my children, a Pil Pilgrim Progress. Mm. You'll find that on each way, Christian has got somebody that he has met, mm. that he's walking with on mm. this road to the Seracho city. He's not mm. walking there alone. Mm. He's got somebody. Mm. And he's talking to someone. We need to have someone that we're talking to. Mm. If I'm going to walk alone, James tells us, there in this world, there's so many trials. Mm. If I face a problem, I be rest assured, Chimamwe, I'll close up. Mm. And when I'll close up, nobody will know that this is what I'll mm. do. I'll be mm. depressed. Mm. I'll, but when I'm engaged, mm. somebody will tell me, mm. this is what I went through. Mm. Well, I know somebody who went through this. Mm. Or let's pray about it. Mm. You know, there are times that we face problems. We get discouraged to even pray. Mm. We feel, no, prayer, I don't know if God will answer me. Mm. I don't know mm. this. But when you have, when you take part, you actually feel, okay, God does answer prayer. Mm. God has brought this person in my life for this purpose. Mm. So we are there to spur one another. We are there not to feel lonely. Mm. We are there not to feel depressed. We are there not to ask the question, is God really there? Mm. Does God say, I'll never leave you or forsake you? Me, I'm here, I'm stranded, this is not happening. Because I'm not where everybody else is. Mm. And when you are isolated, you are prone. Mm. You know, when you look at, uh, watch these uh, animal films, when you see an animal isolated, mm. um, you find that they fall prey mm. to lions. Mm. The moment you see a head of, for example, you see a head of cat, it's there, the buffalo. Mm. And then all of a sudden, they'll look for the weaker one. Mm. And who is the weaker one? The one who is either limping, withdrawn, withdrawn the <laughs> exactly. one who is looking sickly. Mm. We, when the moment we withdraw, we'll mm. start limping. Mm. And then the world will just pounce on us. And whatever the world will bring to us, will actually for prayer because there's nobody to hold our mm, hands mm. to walk with us mm. yes no i think from from this discussion i'm only seeing positives about engaging yes, <laughs> <no negative. laughs> which i think is, is important to to notice and take um cognizance of the fact that you know um there's a lot of positivity which comes with engaging mm -hmm. i know we tend to be busy with work, school, life, family, friendships, but we should also be just as deliberate about making time to be with God. Mm -hmm. And you know, something I always try to remind myself is this life is not our own. We're just we're just passing by. Exactly. And if if you can't make time to spend time with God, to spend time with believers, to do things for God, all these things at an appointed time will now count. Okay, so you know, you've passed away you've gone to the next life what did you do you know and all you can point to is i was at this party i was at this kitchen party i was at this wedding i was at this uh business meeting i went for this business conference okay okay but what what did you do for god what did you do for god's people mm. and everything else just points to how selfish you were with your mm. personal life and not how you try to engage because it won't matter can you imagine it won't matter what job you have it won't matter how many children you have it won't matter how many cars how many how, how many plots you have <laughs> it won't matter it, it all won't matter on At that specific day. day exactly yeah, yeah because when you say that i actually remember that whatsoever you do to the list of my brothers mm, that mm, you do unto me mm. so i cannot do to you if I don't meet you, mm, mm. for me to help you, I should be part of something. Mm. I will see the list of the brother, my brother in need, and then I will help. Mm. If I'm at home, there's a Bible study. I'm at home, there's a prayer meeting. I'm at home, there's a child Sunday church service. I come at 10, I leave at 12. The moment the church service finishes, I just say, the, hi, hi, mm. I'm in the car, mm. I drive out. How will I know the need? Because mm. even me who is seeing you, I won't mm. be able to call to say, you know what, Chimwemwe, I have these troubles. Mm. Mm. So whatever we do to the list of my brother, that's what we are told, mm. that you do unto me. Mm. So let's take part. Let's be part of mm. the church. Mm. Let's get involved. Mm. Let's, it's a hands-on. It's mm. not...
we are not saved to put our hands on our mm. laps. Mm. We are saved to hold the plow. Mm. The, we are told the harvest and the laborers are few. Mm. We are the laborers. Mm. So for a laborer, you are not. I live on a farm. Mm. If I'm not going to work, I'm not going to eat. You won't produce anything. I won't <coughs> harvest anything from the mm. field. Because if I'm not going to, 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 be, to take part, I won't go for evangelism. Mm. I won't encourage. Mm. I won't pray for someone. Mm. I won't do. So all these things will happen. And it means that it was, the church will suffer. Mm. But you are saved by mm. God's grace. Mm. It's a gift. It's given. Mm. So utilize that gift mm. in, in, in the church where you are. Yeah. Build someone. Encourage someone, evangelize to someone, mm. disciple someone. Mm. All those are church activities they that are, we are supposed they to are, take, take they part. Mm. Yeah. No, I've been I've been edified by this session. Mm -hmm. Um Personally, I will be more deliberate in ensuring that I engage because, like I said, there's there's a lot of positives in it yeah. for my personal benefit and even just for my work with God as well. Yes. Um, and I hope uh, all the listeners equally will be able to see just what the benefits are in engaging in church activities mm -hmm. and choose not to be bench warmers. Yeah. So just remember that, uh, listeners out there, that we are meant to be part, we are brought into a body, a church. God says he's building mm. a people of power. Mm. So he's making a people for himself. So if God is building us towards something, mm. let us not be people who are lazy, sitting mm. at home, thinking, okay, my Christianity, me, as long as I go to church mm. on Sunday, mm. as long as I take my tithe, and that's all. Let's take part. Let's be involved in the church activities so that together we may grow each other, we may spur one another, we may help, we may hold each other's hand as the song goes, let me be your servant. Mm. Let me be as Christ to you. Mm. Pray that I may have the grace to be your servant too. Thank you, listeners. I hope um, you will learn one or two things from this podcast and that if we are not engaged in church activities, that we may start doing that and that we may look forward to our next uh, podcast. We'll be looking at doctrine, the importance of doctrine. Oh. I believe we're having a guest for our next yes, topic, yes, is it? we do. Yes. We are going to have a guest and um, to teach us about doctrine, what, what the importance of doctrine is and what doctrine is. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Indeed. Thank you very much for listening. Please don't forget to subscribe.